Okay. So, right. In terms of release, um, I think we'll, we'll list the uh, known issues in the release notes, right? Like the things that we continue improving, but this is going to be the first release that um, we will be supporting. Now, um, for the release strategy, uh, the previous maintainers, they used to release a version of Explorer. And then that particular release was tagged against a, a version of Fabric that it supported. And uh, the Node.js version that people can use if, if there is any dependency on, let's say, the, the software development tools, those were being listed in the release strategy as well. Uh, for instance, if you see over here, it lists um, Explorer version 118 supported version fabric version 1.4 to 2.3, which has been tested. And these are the Node.js versions which were supported back then. So, um, and every release that was created, there would be a tag created over here. And these tags are maintained um, like for the life cycle of the project, right? Now, um, so that's the release strategy that the previous maintainers were following. We can follow similar uh, life cycle uh, for the release. However, one of the challenges that I see with this approach is if we don't pivot to a specific version of Explorer, it's possible that issues could be reported in older versions, right? Um, at least to begin with, to reduce um, the, the support requirements until we stabilize the project. Maybe what we can do is follow a release uh, strategy like the way Fabric team follows. They do a long-term support releases and then they do a, a further release, which are, which may get changed eventually, right? So that's the way like, the Fabric team follows. For instance, we all know like 2.2 version of Fabric is a long-term supported release. If any bugs are reported on that, there is a support available. However, for other releases of Fabric, there is no guarantee that a support for that uh, release would be available or not. So maybe like 2.5 is the other LTS release that they do. We could follow something similar for Explorer saying that, let's say if we start with version 2.0.0, we can say that's the long-term supported or we could not even claim any LTS releases. It, we could just say like 2.0.0 is a major release. However, we will keep improving the product and we cannot guarantee it that there is a stable version because we are in process of adding new features and then improving current feature set. That's, uh, that's something that we could follow. And we could always claim support on just one version of Fabric. I'm not sure if we want to have support across multiple versions. Um, that's going to be additional ask if we, if we want to do that. Like we need a testing strategy across multiple versions. Um, so that's about that. And then we also need a release pipeline in the sense, any release that goes in must be tested against a test suit and make sure the test results are captured before the release goes out. And we could uh, create release pipelines over here uh, through the GitHub actions that do not exist today. That's the other set of activities we must pick it up. I know there are pipelines on Azure, but um, the, the Azure uh, servers are no more available. We'll have to create GitHub pipelines for us. So, uh, Arun, uh, regarding the release, right? Uh, like any documentation we need to add. So, what are the issues we have solved, or like what the new features we brought up? Right. So, there is expectation. So, for the graduated projects in Hyperledger, there is an expectation that uh, the release .md file should be available, or a file should be available which 
tells the user um, like the change log dot md if I'm not wrong. I don't think so. This repository oh, it, it has. So this change log is supposed to capture the information of what changed from the previous version. And um, there are multiple strategies that different people follow for different projects. Few projects they just list all the commits that happened as part of this release, right? In this case, also I see some something like that, like the PRs are listed here. And few teams they go ahead and they write the descriptions. They say like these are the new features introduced and these are the new um, breaking features, and these are like few bug fixes done from the previous release. We could follow either approach, uh, but yes, we need to maintain uh, the change log file. Okay. So around this GitHub Actions plus um, uh, more container images, right? That is mm -hmm. pending with Aditya. So we tested GitHub Actions. It is failing at one condition. So. Uh, do we have a PR on that? Ha, yes. Do you have CR registry? Hmm? Added GitHub CI, it would be. Hmm, this one. This thing. Let me hear this. Give me one minute, I will check on it. Okay. It's failing on something. This one moved to GHCR uh, registry is there, right? Mm -hmm. Do we know where it failed? Um... Uh, like uh, if you go to the PR, right? There, uh, the screenshot of uh, is it was it given? Uh, not this one. Um, three eighty two PR number. Uh -huh, yes. This is a node prone package. I think you should with that. It's being built on. Um, was this triggered from the GitHub uh, actions or was this triggered from on a local environment? GitHub Actions, sir. OK. Um, OK, I can check this with Aditya, or we'll run this again. Uh, and one Vinit PR is also pending. Is that for the Helm charts? Ah, uh, yes. Right, I think the Helm chart, um, I tried and it has some issues. Um, we'll have to check the Explorer DB part in here in the Helm chart. So I believe the volume was not created as part of Helm chart. For ah, instance. Right. Aditya has told to add him the PVC mm -hmm. um, for uh, Postgres DB. I think he has to do that. Minute. Right. 
and uh, apart from that uh, for this release uh, arun mm -hmm. uh, we, we are rigorously testing with uh, you know mul taking different scenarios like uh, multiple channels multiple chain codes so we were facing uh, issues okay so we were fixing it uh, and it might take some time we will give some we will raise issues as well prs for that okay so the ledger height was not consistent some of the issues are like uh, count with respect to channels that is also not updating with single channel and multi multi chain codes right it is working fine but when mm -hmm. we go for multiple channels and multiple chain codes uh, we were getting lot of issues in what kind of issues were they uh, like ledger height if we see right in the network tab we have ledger height so mm -hmm. with respect to so for example i have two channels channel 1 and channel 2 uh, when i when i see the ledger height with respect to channel 1 i'm getting the correct uh, this ledger height but if when i switch to channel 2 right whatever the ledger height of channel 1 it is there the same data we are getting into in the ledger height of channel 2 this is one such issue okay and uh, even chain codes uh, chain codes also we are not getting properly Mm -hmm. So, like in the channel one, I have installed maybe chain code one, chain code two. Uh, in the channel two, I have installed some chain code three. But in the chain code tab, if I go and see right, in the channel two, I am getting the data of channel one. Okay. So, is so, this a UI refresh issue, or is this from the backend? Uh, this is from the backend itself. Okay, that's that's bad. Okay. And is it possible to automate these tests? I'm I know the UI automation or it's not available right now in the Explorer. And I to be honest, I do not know um, which strategy was followed from the previous maintainers on maintaining the real test cases. I don't know if they had a uh, like manual test cases. For instance, we could create a manual test case suit and then maintain status of each of them somewhere. Mm -hmm. The test cases which were written were very, very minimal. Um, they are mocking the blockchain. Um, mm. They are giving some inputs and testing. That's it. Only like... Um, uh, two to three functionalities only they have not gone through it completely one of my other teammate is working on it so it was very very minimal okay let's do one thing let's create a so for all these tests that you are mentioning right i think it's good that we are um, testing them we but we don't have a mechanism to capture the status right mm -hmm. um, we could create our own checklist for all these manual tests that are being conducted and we can mention like these scenarios were tested as part of the release or the regular development cycle and this can serve as a reference for any new developer and we could open up um, um, like a github issue or like in in our uh, meetup event as well we can call for people to come and contribute and make this automation possible we can mm -hmm. say here are the test cases that we are right now uh, doing and then the um, like the gap to get started with the project is not that high uh, it's possible for anybody to come and get started for instance the the low hanging fruit that does not re really require expertise in blockchain or the explorer is over here like you all you need is uh, the Java programming concepts or maybe Node.js programming concepts come and get started automating these things. And we could also ask Hyperledger to help us push that and then get more contributions in. Yes, sir. It could be a CSV file that we maintain on the GitHub itself for now, like a record keeping. We can mention the period when the testing was done 
we can mention let's say any nodes and it, uh, and we can capture this status of the test for now mm -hmm. So I think the release uh, strategies is is important. We'll um, I think I don't know. Maybe we'll follow the same process, uh, the same strategy for release naming convention. We'll have a major version and a minor version, and we'll do minor version changes or patch version changes for any new patches. Minor version changes for um, like additional features that we implement and major version changes if we are doing a breaking change. Would that be uh, good? Hello? Yeah. Uh, so I was talking about release a uh, naming strategy. We'll follow the similar structure having um, major version, minor version, and the patch version. The patch versions are the ones which are bug fixes on the release itself. And minor version changes would be new feature additions. And major versions would be um, breaking changes in the project. Mm -hmm. Would that be fine? Mm -hmm. Anything on uh, release, Archana, still? Uh, no, Satya. So we are good with uh, this one. Uh, uh, only those two releases, what are PR spending, apart from that, everything is okay, right? Huh. So some of, yes, those two PRs and some of the issues we need to raise and uh, fix it, Satya. That's okay. from us and it's pending. Okay. So the other one we'll uh, discuss about the project plan or uh, this uh, scope of this one or anything else you want uh, in your plate. Oh, uh, that is what like by June 30, we have to like uh, give this detailed project plan. We have to pl publish in Wiki. So that also we need to discuss. So Arun, for this scope, whatever we have identified, right, as part of the project proposal. Uh, so this plan, if you want to start, right, uh, maybe what all features will be taken from that? Uh, like, can we uh, decide on those things? Yeah, um, we could. So um, I think we listed a feature set for Menti um, hmm. one. I think so in that link um, the day you have created a page, right? Right. So in the project plan, um, are you proposing to put up the plan only or are you asking to put um, LOE effort like the um, exact tasks to be done by when it has to be done and the, that kind of information? Or is it that you're expecting us to have a high level overview and divide the timelines into sprints and then mark uh, certain milestones during the uh, mentee program? Probably we can do uh, milestone marking. And yeah, that should be fine. As I mean, like, uh, we can break out the whatever the scope, right? So we can have like mile, milestones defined. Uh, depending on that, we can proceed instead of having uh, every high level definition, right? This is better, I think. Right. So I'm assuming uh, the mentees, both the mentees, 
we have uh, their availability is part time for 6 months hmm. so starting from july 1st we'll have to put it, put a line, timeline for 6 months let me um i don't know if there is an option for us to add the timelines info here um so we'll just talk through the uh, milestones and then mm-hmm. we'll outline out the activities and the goals um right um we can elaborate on those aspects so breaking down the 6 months timeline for us um, mm-hmm. i believe like end of 6th month we want the menti to present to the um, global audience the work they have accomplished right so okay. milestone would be a uh, global meetup showcase demo and showcase of the work that has happened mm-hmm. and, um, i believe this also has to be al- aligned with uh, the linux foundations uh, demo official demo so there is i don't remember the exact timelines mm-hmm. Uh, Linux Foundation has across all the projects, not just Hyperledger Foundation, but all the projects, where they invite um, all the mentees to come and demo what they have done, and this will be great opportunity for for all the mentees to present there. So this is something we need to uh, talk to Min about and get the timelines. Mm. We'll have to align our demo to that timeline. It will be good for us. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> if i'm not wrong it was around in J- january sometime like mid january okay um, we can ask me about it oh um timelines to be confirmed from me and um we could have um one demo every two months and invite a menti to schedule a call and this does not necessarily need to be a global meetup mm-hmm. this could project level um um demo of the progress that the menti is making right okay. and we could send out in an invite to the labs so we can have like three check checklist or three uh, checkpoints in the 
life cycle of project mm -hmm. do, you, do you think that sounds good having three checkpoints is monthly arun or uh, by month two months once so there is one expectation like we will start receiving emails from linux foundation asking for mentee evaluation mm -hmm. and uh, i believe this happens um uh, once so there will be like mid term evaluation as well and there will be either monthly or one and half month evaluation uh, request mm -hmm. sent to us mm -hmm. and we will be required all the mentors will be required to send the status okay so how do we align uh, the milestones to that i think at least the mid evaluation is must mm -hmm. uh, again the ta exact time is something we can check with min okay and maybe we could have a monthly checkpoint by every month we could have a checkpoint so it will be demo every month uh, you're mentioning arun so yeah this could Check also points. happen as part of uh, the regular mm -hmm. uh, explorer calls it's like okay. once a month we'll have demo scheduled for at least 30 minutes where mentee can present their work mm -hmm. okay so uh, starting july and we can schedule it last week of july mm -hmm. and believe august would also happen that way and for september it could be mid term evaluation for the mentee and for mm -hmm. october it could be again monthly checkpoint november it will be final demo on that right maybe december is the um we mm -hmm. can keep this for the global meetup number okay. will have one more monthly checkpoint mm -hmm. so every month will have a checkpoint and then alternate months will have mid term evaluation and the final evaluation okay so i think this should be good right yes yeah and um the initial two weeks we need to also account for onboarding and learning or ramp up activities and this could be um should i mention timelines here end of june and checkpoint here would be um, both on mentors and mentee to make sure that we understand project scope clearly and we understand the requirements to work on the project okay the requisites expectation should be set um i'm still waiting for to hear back on like what is expected by all the mentees i haven't mm -hmm. heard back on what is needed but mm -hmm. if they require any sessions then it's on us to make okay. sure like we do sessions to them mm -hmm. so in in uh, i think we need to prioritize do you have a preference of which of these to be prioritized uh, we would take first the second line item um... okay so the purging takes the priority and then 
can we um, in, include uh, the bootstrap purge or like the bootstrap activity as well as part of this activity? The initial... we... Um, sorry, I didn't get you. Were you saying something? Oh, no, that might take some time. So, okay. Um, let's see. The, the, Let's see if we can um, at least have an evaluation done. And I think this activity will let the mentee understand the project. And then the mentee can come and propose, uh, let's say, by end of July to the group on what their explorations were. So the uh, bootstrap thing, uh, uh, what is the exact thing we are expecting, uh, Arun? So at the time of load, uh, every time uh, we should not fetch those records in the light. That's the reason. That's, that's right. So the bootstrap becomes a bit for somebody to deploy or start using Explorer. Mm -hmm. um, so there may be networks which are like three to four years old, which have millions of blocks mm -hmm. and uh, like GBs of data. Mm -hmm. The, the uh, time for Explorer tool to be ready state is longer for such cases. Mm -hmm. um, uh, personally, I have seen cases where it can take days together, like more than 20 to 30 days for uh, syncing. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's something we, we can look into improving on the bootstrap time. Yeah, yeah sure. And I believe like we can start uh, picking up the role management and removing the CA dependency if possible, um, because this is going to take some time and like the, the, this entire section of user management, including authentication and authorization, this could be prioritized next. And if by then, by this time, if we have um, UX design for some part, then, for UX, then those activities can be picked up. Okay. Or, so this um, user like, management, uh, I don't like any, like, uh, are we ready with the requirement of what to be implemented actually? So the uh, team will be ready, not a problem to take it, but uh, requirement wise, are we clear like what has to be done or what needs to be done? Or right, anything so, we need to check with another other team, we have to discuss something like that. Or... So one, something that we can start looking into from user management perspective is, uh, right now, the Explorer has its own user management mechanism, mm -hmm. but in typical corporate environments, when if we want this tool to be in, installed and deployed, mm -hmm. they already have an uh, identity mechanism, right? The ID, IDM, ID, whatever we call identity management or access mechanism mm -hmm. created for organizations. Correct. And majority of them will follow uh, typical standards where it's either OAuth if we want to delegate permissions or it's going it's to be- It's like a SSO, uh, like Aaron, you're expecting or like a SSO mm -hmm. type of thing. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. So there should be an option at the time of starting the Explorer, mm -hmm. like through some configuration parameters an existing uh, identity management solution should be reusable. Okay. It could be done in many ways. We could start looking into mm -hmm. supporting OAuth, for instance, and then we could uh, look into um, OIDC model as well, if, if that's something we want to go with, or we could look into the SAML approach. Mm -hmm. So SAML allows for authentication. However, authorization is still maintained within the tool. Okay. These are some of the models we can start looking into. Mm -hmm. And we can support um, any of them, or we could support all of them, depending on how we want to um, proceed, or at least through this experiment, through one of the support that we provide, we will mm -hmm. learn what what else is the gap as part of this evaluation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
So after configuration, maybe we can look into the user management aspect uh, mm -hmm. that give us good um, work in terms of adoption, product, product adoption. And this will also remove dependency with Fabric CA, if at all, uh, that we currently have. Mm -hmm. So that being said, and um, by this time, if we have some of the UX, new UX design, we could pick it up. Or if uh, the UX is still not ready, then we can uh, work on some of the metrics part, the network level observability to alert the users if something happens at the network level. So, so the fabric uh, metrics that we receive it's localized to the peers and order nodes currently, like the Prometheus metrics information. However, at the network level, there is no tool that provides the visibility. For, for if, let's say the peers are out of sync across organizations, mm -hmm. currently it's not possible. Like every organization is expected to have their own mechanism built. And since Explorer has this visibility across organizations, we could emit those information in as Prometheus metrics. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go to that. And all these features that we discussed so far, they are going to help in uh, product adoption and they are going to fix some of the problems that today users face. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so, uh, be good from adoption standpoint. And I'm assuming by this time we'll have the um, user interface available to start working on. And those mm -hmm. could be the next set of features, right? All the enhancement that we were planning in terms of user experience. And then we could um, also start improving the search experience. Um, okay. Anything that we have planned earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we can further like, again, regroup, maybe midterms and mm -hmm. add more activities, detailed activities, but this, uh, should be good set of work for close to three months. Okay. Sure. And then see if I can, um, elaborate more in terms of activities if possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll follow this call if everybody is okay with this. Sure, sure. Uh, Arun, one request, Arun, like uh, regarding this user access management, right? Uh, mm -hmm. If possible, can you put your thoughts in one document and can uh, share it across the team? Yes. So how uh, we have to start with and, uh, you know, what exactly we need to look upon? these things once we finalize then we can start working right yes so i may have a few questions on the current working of the team i will reach out to you if i have more questions what mm -hmm. i can help with is put up an architecture diagram of the current working and then how the new architecture proposed architecture would look like with the for the user access management and um, the possible ways we can integrate or like the possible features we could implement for each of them. Hmm. Would that help? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll reach out to you. I may have a few questions on the current way of working. Okay. Um, any questions on any other questions on the plan? We'll put up the activities um, uh, offline. This is going to take time. We'll have to evaluate and then understand, add uh, multiple activities under each of these goals. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that we can take it up for. And so once you update, we will go through that and we can update and we can review also. Yeah. Oops. And uh, one more thing, uh, Arun, uh, this uh, call, whatever uh, bi-weekly we are planning, at, uh, it is happening at IST, right? Like uh, last time we were discussing, we will move to US time, right? But can you uh, reschedule that, uh, Arun? Because still it is at 4 o'clock only. 
uh sure so what time would work i know it's going to be late and i uh-huh. know my job the team are in based in india mm-hmm. and that's when i was not pushing that hard but if, uh-huh. if because the problem is uh, since you morning time 4 o'clock right if you are not there and sometimes aditya will be busy right so call is not happening so like even after waiting for two weeks if uh, nothing like pr and all something pending right will not be able to proceed so that's what we thought at least uh, if you are in where you are you are regularly joining right so we thought we'll continue with uh, this time oh, and is it okay does or this hmm. does this happen on thursday or wednesday 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 thursday you told you have some other conflict right so we thought we'll do it on wednesday okay this time on wednesday sh- should work so if that is fine with you like maybe we can reschedule that to uh, this 7:30 or st 7:30 something hmm. sure makes sense and wouldn't this be too late i hope it's not too late for india uh, it's only by like the, the two weeks once right that should be fine because otherwise even if it is uh, other purpose also like uh, people are not joining in the morning time and if you are not getting inputs right like team will not be able to proceed with their work that's the reason okay um at least this do. time you will be compulsory you will be joining right so at least we will get inputs from you so we can start working on those review cup points and all let's let's do that so once in two weeks mm-hmm. we'll we'll also push uh, the other members mm. who are based in us uh, to join yeah yeah sure and I, be, I, be, i hope this time also works for european region as well yeah correct mm. perfect anything else sachna uh no satya okay yeah that's all arun so once we have that uh, point set we'll we'll also go through that and try to see if anything updated to be done and this call you can reschedule to this time okay so uh, mm. quick question does mm. anybody among you have access to the calendar calendar uh, for creating calendar uh, arun arun right on the mailing list so we uh, we go create mm. this mailing list okay let mm. me stop recording so mm-hmm.